welcome everyone to the green room. We are in a literal green room. Um, this is just going to be a conversation. We have conversations week after week in our green rooms, and so we thought, why not just get together, talk about life, talk about worship, mm -hmm. and go from there. So, welcome. We're glad that you're joining us. Awesome. Yeah. Let's start with introductions, light introductions, yeah? Light intro. It's light. Uh, Name. I'm Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cassidy. Um, I'm the central ministry leader of Worship Arts at Life Church. Really long title means that I kind of like oversee creative culture at Life Church. And so I get to work with these guys, some of our incredible worship pastors. Um, and it's a time. Yes, it's great. Yeah. My name is Rob Estevez. I am. Her husband. It's true. Blessed to be. Mm. Thank yes. God. Amen. Amen. And, and this, yeah. is, yes. this is ours yeah. as well. Future child. Come on. Get it. We did that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and I'm one of the worship pastors mm -hmm. at one of our campuses. Simple title. Hey, I'm Stephanie Cutter. Um, I'm also one of the worship pastors at one of our campuses in the Oklahoma City metro. Yep. Um, yeah, that's who I am. Awesome. I'm Gabe. I am a worship pastor at Life Church in Norman. Wow. And uh, Come on, at, my wife actually works with Central Worship as well. Mm -hmm. And we just had first baby. Yes. First baby girl. Um, so I'm a little bit obsessed. As you should uh, be. You Sorry. know, I would die for her. And I would also <laughs> kill for her. Yes. <laughs> He has it. It's not. That's not a real threat. No. <laughs> Would you lie? Yeah. But he's ready. But, uh, no, it's it's at the drop of it's, it's amazing. Don't cross yeah. him. That's awesome. That's great. Sooner Nation. Sooner Nation. You know. Mm. You know that's an interesting thing because yeah. personally, I don't care at all. Mm. Right. But my my responsibility as a, as a pastor right, to right, serve right. my community. Come on. Yep. I don't Boomer believe sooner. That right. At all. right. Boomer right. sooner. Steph's on a totally different page. <laughs> Here's the deal though. <laughs> I I love UT Texas. Mm -hmm. I but I feel like it just ramps up because I have a slight tendency to be ornery. Mm. And I think or, it's just ornery. it's just being <laughs> slight. And so I think it just gets ramped up living right. in Oklahoma that yeah. I know I'm gonna ruffle feathers, and so I just like lay it you on. You just gotta like, twist the knife just, just a little bit. Just hook horns uh -huh. to it. Yeah, You're so that's really. Twister. I do. I See, do love longhorns, but I, I just don't care yeah. about <laughs> the longhorns. I don't care about anyone <laughs> as far as football wow. teams, well, except great. for the like Sooners. Pastor. Great pastoring <laughs> technique. Except for great pastoring. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, we're both transplants. Like I, I don't care about football at all. Yeah. I'm there for the snacks and the friendship and well, the, true. And the fun, yeah. but I'm not, I don't but I, know. I was surprised at how big college football like yeah. actually is. It's like, like not really even a thing. Most of their arenas are bigger than fun. NFL arenas. Like it's pretty wild. So I mean, I grew up in Northeast, like mm -hmm. Giants, Jets, mm. that's the thing. And so when people are like, oh, we're going to go to this college football game, it's like, why do you care? Like, what does yeah. it even well, matter? For, I mean, in that defense, it is the Jets that sure. you're comparing against, you know? <laughs> you're, you're right. I'm not even going to lie. I'm a Giants fan, personally. I don't. <laughs> Their fan base is a life group, you know? <laughs> like, so... Oh, no. I'm not going to lie. I don't even know what sport we're talking about right this... now. <laughs> I'm guessing it's basketball or football. It's football. Okay. Football. We never left the football trade, Steph. Cool. That's how you cool. know this is a group of worship cool. pastors. Go sports. Go sports. Go sports. But it's been a time. Oklahoma's a, a great place to be, a great place to to set up camp and mm -hmm. blessed really to be here. It is. Like, so I grew up in Florida. Um, never even gave Oklahoma a second thought. Like, mm -hmm. I knew, uh, what's the movie? The Wizard of Oz took place? Yeah. No, it was oh. Kansas. Nope. <laughs> that's not even Oklahoma. <laughs> but, like, that's so just officially, what I, that's just officially what I zero it's things close. It's close. <laughs> about Oklahoma. 
<laughs> but like the whole like tornado thing, like that's really what I thought of. Sure. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. Wizard of Oz 2.0. <laughs> but since we got married and I moved out here to to be with him, and then ultimately ended up here at Life Church, like the people here are just incredible. Like yeah. I'm so glad God yeah. brought me. It's mm-hmm. not much to look at, mm-hmm. but the people here are just phenomenal. And I really think. Like that's what's important mm-hmm. is community, mm-hmm. and and finding that really good, healthy, just support system, and we've found that here for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of people talk lately about like the difference between niceness and kindness, Ooh. Mm-hmm. and I feel like Oklahoma people are very kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's not genuine. just a superficial. Right. I don't know. I don't know. There's a there's just a kindness about the the people yeah. here that is. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I also, I never thought we would live in Oklahoma. I, we lived in Dallas, and then I helped move one of my buddies. He actually started a church up here as well. Mm-hmm. And I helped him move, and I was like, Oklahoma City? <laughs> mm. I was like, what are you doing? What's what even there? Yeah. Aren't they Gross. like still driving around in horse and buggy and stuff? Gross. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, about three years later, I looked up and... <laughs> we live right down the street. <laughs> yeah. Dude, no joke. We came up to visit some friends for Thanksgiving. Gosh, so my husband is on staff as well. And um, we came to Life Church at the end of 2012. So this was like a couple of years before that. And we had some friends that were here. We came to spend Thanksgiving with them. And then he had some friends here at Life Church that he wanted to come visit while we were here. Mm-hmm. And he came by himself. I didn't come with him when he left. And he came. I was like, but don't get any ideas. I'm not moving to Oklahoma. <laughs> and then like two years later, here we are. we're here. So never say never. You know, <laughs> God's going to do what he's going to do. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So and, and all we have to do is is say yes. Yeah. Is be willing. So true. You know? Yeah. And look up. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it. You know? so yeah. Good. Wouldn't trade it. Yeah. And you guys have been here how many years now? So in we Oklahoma. have been in Norman um, for about five and a half years, almost mm-hmm. six years now. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And prior to that, like how long have you been on staff? Yep. So I've been on staff just about a year longer than that. So okay. about six and a half years, six um, half. 14 days and seven hours. <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> not that he's counting. <laughs> yeah, not that I'm counting. <laughs> At all. But, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Steph? Um, nine and a half. I'll hit ten years. Oh my god! This Yay. fall, this September. Congrats! Wow. Yeah. Congratulations! Yeah, thanks. That's, That's insane. It really flies by, yeah. doesn't it? Is this mm-hmm. eight years for you? Just yeah. over eight. Yeah, in the fall it'll be nine. So yeah, That's weird. Incredible. And it's then you crazy. just celebrated. I just celebrated five. five. Technically yeah. five and a half because I started yeah, as an intern. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's but, yeah, I, right. I followed Rob out here and then after we got married, I came on staff. So yeah. But yeah. That's good. Amazing. Going back to what you were saying about like saying yes to Jesus and following mm-hmm. it, like he's going to mm-hmm. do what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. Like we just had our baby shower, right? Which both of y'all were at mm-hmm. and it was so awesome. We love babies. <laughs> and you know, we had that time of prayer at the end where all of you guys mm-hmm. were just praying over us. And I, in the midst of that, in the midst of like tears, I, I, um, <clears throat> I just thought like, this is the fruit of sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That moment right there, mm-hmm. like all these people, and it took a while to build that yeah. around us. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't easy. Moving out here wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. Um, getting married in a place where we had no family wasn't easy. There was so much sacrifice involved in yeah. saying yes to what God was calling us to do. Mm-hmm. But in that moment, I realized this is it. Like this is the reward yeah. of all that sacrifice. It's people that know us, that love us, that mm-hmm. care for us, that surround us literally. Yeah. 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 Not just in good times and in right. uh you know, joy, but like in prayer and mm-hmm. walking through life with us yeah. through good and bad. And yeah. so, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, here at Life Church, we'll say we give up things we love for things that we love more. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I think it's easy to have the mindset when you're talking about that, that you, the sacrifice is kind of always a negative thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's in those moments Mm -hmm. in your life. And there are, I mean, sometimes it is hard. Like there are things that in ministry that we give up um, to pursue the call of God on our lives. Um, But there's also blessing in that as well. Mm -hmm. And it's in like those specific moments that that feels so real. Like, yes, it was a sacrifice to leave everything you knew, Mm -hmm. to come here and not know what the days and the years ahead would look like. Mm -hmm. But when you fully give yourself to 
what God is doing mm-hmm. and to mm-hmm. follow His plan, um, even when there's sacrifice. Man, more often times than not, there are beautiful moments like mm-hmm. that that you're yeah. reminded of, like, ah, oh, thank you, God, that yeah. you led me to this place because mm-hmm. I wouldn't have this. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't have these people in my life if I wouldn't have done that. It's mm-hmm. so true. God honors sacrifice. Like, mm-hmm. if you just trust Him, even though sometimes it feels like it takes a while to build that community, like you said, like, just keep trusting, just keep stepping in faith, like, following mm-hmm. what He puts before you and the blessings that He pours out on that. Like, I can't even imagine finding this community anywhere mm-hmm. else. Like, yeah, no. It's just so beautiful it's so much more than we ever dreamed we would have Mm -hmm. not just the community but other things too like Mm -hmm. the opportunities we have here um the things we get to step into as pastors like we wouldn't have found this elsewhere and so i think it's just really important to see how god honors faithfulness Mm -hmm. in sacrifice Mm -hmm. it's truly a gift sacrifice is a gift Mm -hmm. to follow is a gift Mm -hmm. and i think it's so counter to how the world prepares us to be like yeah. in society, mm-hmm. I think just like on a human, like basic human level, we're taught to like gain control. Mm. Yeah. Like, what are you doing with your life? How are you doing it? Do you have this? Do you have that? Yeah. Um, how are you protecting yourself? Like mm-hmm. there, it's all this rhetoric that we're just taught to live in, in human society, but the kingdom of God is the complete opposite. Yeah. Like you're, it's, like upside it's, down. it's literally the exact yeah. opposite. It's like, how much are you willing to give? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just think that speaks directly into the heart of worship yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and what it is and why we do it. I think, um, everyone worships something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it, um, comfort, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, everyone has an idol, mm-hmm. um, w- because, because that's, uh, ours might not be like a golden idol, like a golden mm-hmm. calf, right. you know, that right. comes out of the thing, but, but it may be the job. Yeah. It may be this, this thing that I'm pursuing. It might be money, but it also might be an emotion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that I have placed in more important position than Christ mm-hmm. and and I think this this heart to sacrifice to be willing to to die to ourselves in order to glorify God mm-hmm. like that is what worship is mm-hmm. yeah. you know that that is the the posture that that I think we we need to have as we yeah. as we worship as we sing is is I'm placing God at the the first, the most important, the highest place yeah. in my heart and in my life. And there's nothing more. Anything else that is above that is an idol. Yeah. And we are all so susceptible. Even, even after following Christ for so long inside of the church, mm-hmm. Straight up. it is so, yeah. we, are, we are still have to be on guard and yeah. protected yeah. against yeah. those idols 100%. because they exist inside of what we can, of what we do yeah. if, if we allow them. Yeah. yeah. And it, your calling could also be the idol too. It's mm. true. Right. It's like what what do you give your attention to? Right. Yeah. That's what an idol mm-hmm. is. Yeah. What are you looking to on your day to day? And so just like you said, like there we all have to take an audit of our thought process mm-hmm. in the decisions that we make. Mm-hmm. Um and I think I could because I I'm sure we've all had questions like how do you really follow? God, mm-hmm. like, how do you really know what the calling is or what he wants for your life? And I think it starts by asking those questions like, well, what am I, am I leaning on him mm-hmm. or am I looking to everybody else to decide mm-hmm. what is right? Am I looking at culture? Am I looking at the culture of my church right. yeah. to dictate what I should or should not be yeah. doing instead of giving that attention to the Lord or sure. uh, even, even your, the desires of your own heart, you know? And a scripture does say that he does know the desires of our heart and he does want to give us good things, but we can even worship the gifts he gives us. Right. We can mm-hmm. even worship right. the calling mm-hmm. over worshiping yeah. him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a fine line. It's a blurry thing, right? It doesn't it doesn't hit you right, mm-hmm. right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's something we have to constantly, like you said, keep on guard yeah. and remember, I'm here for him. Uh, mm-hmm. somebody, I was just talking with uh, somebody on my team and we we're just talking about the Lord and just some breakthroughs that uh, her and her family have been going through. And she said, like, God created us to be, not to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, even from the very beginning, right, yeah. when he said to Adam, 
he said, this is good. Adam had done nothing yeah. at the very beginning, and he said that it was good. All value, all love, all mm. joy yeah. given to him in that moment. He was complete in the way God made him by just spending time with him mm. in the garden. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, do we actually do that? Right. Do we put mm-hmm. that value in just us being? Are we ever satisfied mm-hmm. with just being at very few moments mm-hmm. where I am in my house not doing anything and I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> peak, <laughs> done. Right. I'm, right. I, you know, I feel good. A, a lot of, a lot of thoughts um, that I have by myself, I think about, well, did I do enough today? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Is there something she needs that I'm not aware of? Mm. Is there something that I should be thinking of in my job that I haven't thought of yet? Am I, am I safeguarding? It's so much am I, am I, am I, mm-hmm. instead of yeah. I am. Like, it is okay. Like, I'm, I was created for this. God is here. Like, it's, a, it's good, yeah. you know? Well, that's like the purest form of worship, right? It comes back to like a heart posture. It's... Mm. Um, it's a dependency on God. Uh, to me, that's the purest coming in worship um, and whatever you're doing and whatever form of worship. It's mm-hmm. it's that heart posture, and it's not perfection, right? right. Um, because we're we're human and we're gonna mess up, and mm-hmm. so it's you know we have a song called Christ in Me. It's mm-hmm. the He is perfect, um, and it's Christ in me mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, that I'm able to come to Him mm-hmm. with pure worship, and I think, oh, it's a verse in uh, Isaiah that talks about you know our righteousness or our best efforts are mm-hmm. like filthy rags. Mm-hmm. So I'm never going to achieve <laughs> perfection, yeah. but my heart can be postured to be turned towards Him, um, and and come to Him with with my heart turned towards yeah. Him mm. in that moment. Yeah. And yes, pursuing um, holiness, Mm -hmm. pursuing the things of God, but also not trying to do it in my own strength. Because when I'm doing it in my own strength, then where are my eyes? My eyes are turned inward. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm focused on myself and what am I doing Mm -hmm. to achieve this? Where if I can keep my eyes focused on Him, um, then I'm dependent on Him and I can come with a more pure heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Yeah. And he will give you what you need and he will tell right. you what to yeah. do. Right. Yeah. It's not like this, For I just sure. sit back mm-hmm. and never do anything yeah. and, mm-hmm. and my life is complete. It's like if you're abiding in the spirit, if you right. if you are talking to God, if he is with you, he'll give you things to do. Right. Mm-hmm. But just like how we were going back, it's like such a gift to follow because yeah. then that thing is right. not rooted in your strength. It's right. rooted in his, in mm-hmm. his will. Yeah. So it's like mm-hmm. uh, if he's already gone before me, and told me to do this thing mm-hmm. or be in this place, then it's going to work. Right. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. okay. Yeah. And I don't I don't have to take any yeah. credit for for anything. Like it's just right. it's going to be okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like tangibly though, what do you guys do? Because it you ha- you can have that mindset, but then um, as he shows you things to do and you step into those things and then those things start to happen and then you just kind of get in the grind of the work. I mean I found and in my time of like in ministry, Mm -hmm. it can like teeter Mm -hmm. back and forth where I'm like, okay, I'm like, oh, I feel like I receive this from God. I'm stepping out in faith to do it. And then it teeters back to like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, a little bit more self-focused or in my strength, Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do this. So what do you guys tangibly do to help keep it aligned? I think... um well, we're, uh, kind of even on this theme is like the the purity mm-hmm. that we can have inside of worship, and mm-hmm. I feel like that is that is the the trick to how do you do this consistently is living in a place of repentance, mm-hmm. in a mm-hmm. place of constantly recognizing my <laughs> shortcomings. Yeah, you know, I That's um, good. you mentioned Isaiah like. When I think of of this, think of Isaiah six, right? And it's the vision where Isaiah is in the throne room and says, "Behold, I saw the Lord, and the seraphim were flying above him with six wings, and they covered their face and their feet. They were flying, and they say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory.'" 
And what was Isaiah's immediate response? He's in the presence of God. He's seeing this. And his immediate response is, woe is me. Mm. I am a man of unclean lips. And I am amongst a people of unclean lips. His immediate response was repentance. Yeah, Yeah, that's good. And then what happened immediately following was was that the the angel flew to him with a coal. And it says it touched his lips and it made him clean. And it removed his guilt and his sin was atoned for. Like, then we're met with grace. And not a grace that is... Didn't say it was mashed against his his right. his mouth. No, it was it was a touch. God's grace is gentle, and, and when we come with repentance, like that's how we are received mm-hmm. in Him. Is that is that He's going to purify us. He's going yeah. to make us clean. Yeah. Um, but it, but it's a gentle grace. And then I, I I just love like what happens out of that is is again, inside of the heart of repentance is a heart of evangelism. Mm. Because mm. immediately mm. when he recognized, I am, I am unclean, but I'm also amongst a people of unclean lips, he immediately yeah. sees his brother. He right. immediately sees the, the person walking next to him. And then God, uh, immediately after his sanctification, uh, the Lord asked, who will go for us? Here I am, send me. Mm-hmm. Right? Like this... Mm. My dad always talked about that passage. My dad was a pastor, and um, he always talked about it like this is the greatest worship service of all time. Mm. Like if every worship service could look like this, mm. we'd all be okay. Mm-hmm. If it was that we get in the presence of God, it leads us to repentance, we experience grace, mm-hmm. and we leave knowing that I have a burden yeah. to share what right. I just experienced, yeah. right? I think living in that place of repentance is how you can tangibly keep your heart in check. Mm-hmm. That's so um, good. I love that that sequence of events. I think mm-hmm. practically just ask yourself, are my actions leading to repentance? Mm-hmm. Are the things I'm creating on stage mm-hmm. bringing repentance and sacrifice out of me mm-hmm. and out of the people that I lead? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Does it put me in a humble place? Right. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Right. Because if, if you're... If you are allowing the spirit to dictate and to move within the songs you choose, within the uh, the creative decisions that you make, the way you lead your teams, it will do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's it, it. Scripture says like it's your kindness that mm-hmm. leads us to repentance. Right. Yeah. If the fruits of the spirit are being ushered into the room, mm-hmm. then that's what's going to happen. We're going to mm-hmm. recognize. Oh shoot. <laughs> I am a man of unclean, unclean lips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then grace will meet you there. So right. like I would pay attention to that sequence mm. of emotion mm-hmm. within you as mm-hmm. the leader and as your teams. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. th- that's what worship is. It's sacrifice. Right. It always yeah. has been that. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I saw this clip from Taya. She said like the first time worship was recorded in scripture was Adam and Isaac, where God was mm-hmm. asking him mm-hmm. to lay his calling. On oh, the yeah. altar, wow. mm-hmm. yeah, his inheritance, his legacy, yeah. on the yeah. altar, wow, and right. testing his ability to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. do you worship me? Do you love me over your calling, over the thing I have promised you? Mm-hmm. Right. Do you love my gifts more than me? Mm-hmm. Over the thing I've blessed you with, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, right, and that he's <laughs> waited for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he waited so long yeah. and yeah. made mistakes, and God still gave him grace. Like, think about that whole journey. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. It worship leads to sacrifice. Right. It leads mm-hmm. to repentance. It leads to obedience. Yeah. That's how you know. Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's the fruit that is supposed to come out of whatever decision you're making. Right. Yeah. I think it's so cool, like the grace of God. Like you're talking about how you kind of go back and forth in seasons. Like we're all gonna find ourselves in those seasons, mm-hmm. even knowing all of this. Mm-hmm. We right. all find ourselves in Straight these seasons up. of Oh, we're back to self-reliance and self-focus. And it can happen so easily because we're humans mm-hmm. and we fall short every yeah. day. But I think it's just that simple act of like, when you realize it, you repent. You mm-hmm. just take it to Jesus. Like, let him fill you. Let him work in you. And he will lead yeah. you back to that place. Mm-hmm. And so just having grace for yourself when you find yourself there is really important. Yeah. As leaders, like, we can oh, put a lot good. of pressure on ourselves of like, well, I'm falling short mm. in this. How the heck can I lead other people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to not fall short in this? Like, yeah. Imposter syndrome. But the yeah. imposter syndrome mm-hmm. is huge. Like, we just have to remember, just because we're pastors, 
does not mean that we are any less susceptible to right. everything that we're leading people through. Right. And we have to be okay with that, find God's grace for us in mm-hmm. that, um, and be open with other people about that too. I think um, sometimes we keep our struggles to ourselves mm-hmm. in an attempt to like not let people feel like, oh, mm-hmm. we can't handle leading them. Yeah. Or like, oh, this person can't be trusted. Mm-hmm. And that's just, wow. that just sets you up for failure over and over again. So. Yeah. Transparency, honesty, um, finding maybe trusted people to like mm-hmm. keep you kind of accountable. Like, hey, I'm I'm falling into this again. Mm-hmm. Like, just be praying with me. Um, all of that's really important. But having grace for yourself because God has grace for us mm-hmm. is so so mm-hmm. so crucial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gosh, that's good. And it's like sucks that it's easier said than done. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it totally is. Yeah, it totally is. But that's a faith step, right? Mm-hmm. Is to the community side of it for yeah. sure is, you know, and hopefully you're in a place where you have trusted relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is, um, that's the culture that you're surrounded yeah. by. I mean, that's what I've loved about being here mm-hmm. is yeah. experiencing a culture where that's encouraged and expected mm-hmm. yeah. as well. Yes. Because that's what makes right. the difference. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So good. Awesome. This is great. This is is usually like whenever we write songs, like this is usually how it starts too. Like the first hour and a half is just this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's so necessary. And uh, we we were writing, uh, it was with a few of other worship pastors. It was on a Wednesday morning. It's usually like the time we have free. And I'm just like, y'all, can we do this every day? Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I need, I need this. This fills me up so much when we just talk about the things of God and like Mm -hmm. talk about our life and repent and talk about our struggles like together. Um, and just, it's actively seeking him Mm -hmm. in that moment. And, um, so this is just, I just love this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and I think it's like one iron sharpens iron, Uh but one of our our uh, first axiom inside of life church worship is that mm-hmm. we are worshipers who build worshipers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the the passage that we have connected to that is colossians 316 mm-hmm. it's that allow the, the the word of Christ to dwell in you richly mm-hmm. and encourage and admonish one another mm-hmm. with hymns and songs yeah. I mean it's that same mm-hmm. thing it's like this personal private worship is supposed to be private worship mm-hmm. but Corporate worship is supposed to be corporate worship, right? Like it's sometimes uh, the person I'm singing for one, yes, of course I'm singing to God, but it also might be for the person who's right next to me that needs to, that needs to hear me sing this over you. It's the same thing here as we, as we sit here and we, we have these conversations, we talk about, about what's real in our heart and what God is doing in our lives. Like that is... That's it. You know, yeah. that is, that's, we are being built as worshipers mm-hmm. right yes. now in this, in this room. Mm-hmm. I love that image of like singing the song for the person next to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That happens so much for me, like looking out, right? Like yeah. we see all our people. Right. Mm-hmm. They think we can't. They think <laughs> yeah. we can't. Oh, we like, and I tell them, I tell them, I'm like, yeah. oh, hey, by the way, I saw you. And they're like, you saw me. I was like, yes, I see you. Like, and, and I love it. I love to make yeah. eye contact with people that I right. know, right. like people in my life group yeah. that I see, I wave to them mm-hmm. like to make it that moment. But I remember this one particular service, we were opening up with Graves into Gardens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had saw this couple who I knew the wife had just lost their brother mm-hmm. like two days before. Wow. And they were in church. Young, 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 mm-hmm. like in his 20s. Mm-hmm. And I'm singing, you turn my morning to dancing. You know, it changes the whole climate. Right. Right. Yeah. of the service right. knowing that this isn't just a generic mm-hmm. truth for a room mm-hmm. full of people but it's yeah. for that one yeah. person right. and that one right. scenario yeah. mm-hmm. and as soon as I like the whole it was so crazy the whole set had that theme in it yeah. of like singing out of struggle mm-hmm. and God's transformation and I didn't even plan it like right. that way it just happened mm-hmm. to be that way yeah. and as soon as I got off stage I texted the husband I was like yo this set was for y'all 
I realize now when I saw it, yeah. mind you, we yeah. got five services, right? <laughs> this was just one, right. yeah. but I knew that whole right. thing was for that story, for right. that moment, for them. So I could sing that over them and we can partner together. Right. Yeah. And I told them like, I'm praying for you. I know this was for you. Know that God is with you. Mm-hmm. It just changes the whole climate yep. when you know the story yeah. next to you. Yes. And yes. you get to shoulder that burden and weep alongside those who weep, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's like the greatest thing that I, one of the greatest privileges I think we have yeah. as, to, pastors. as pastors yeah. and what as a, followers. Like, yeah. And like, what a beautiful thing to be at that place as a, a worship pastor that, you know, you even talked about it earlier about like as, as worship pastors or just pastors, like we have to remember that we are, mm-hmm. we're human too. Mm-hmm. And then in, in the midst of that leading to, be able to be encouraged by what yeah. God is doing in the room as well. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. not mm. become so isolated that you think you're there Ooh, to bring yeah. it, but come on. No, you're you're there as a vessel. Yep. Right. To to point people, but then when you yeah. in return are being pointed mm. back to the heart of God in mm. a moment, like yeah. those are the sweetest moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To and be able to be in the room. Like in that it. instance that you're talking about, like the whole vessel thing, like you didn't know when you planned that set that that person right. was going to yeah. have just lost their brother mm-hmm. and be sitting right there. But God, like when you were talking earlier about how like part of all of this is just submission and just like not being okay with not being in control, like mm-hmm. letting the Holy Spirit Ugh. move through you. Like, yes, God ordained that set. Yes. He knew. Right. And how and much so better? Then, yeah. How much better is it to just experience like, oh, God went ahead of all of this. Mm-hmm. Like none of this mm-hmm. is just the songs that I picked. Like I might have thought they were, but God was <laughs> in all of it because I was submitted. Mm. Like and then the the joy that you get to feel through that, like uh-huh. how it blesses you, but it's also blessing them and countless others that you don't even know about. Like mm-hmm. there's just so many different mm-hmm. layers of blessing that come from just being open-handed and submitted yeah, and up. letting God move through your obedience. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think it's so much better when you know what you were created to do. And yeah. let's talk about the vessel thing for a second, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. A vessel does not produce anything. Come on. Mm. Mm. I think we can get it twisted sometimes that yeah. we are the production. Mm-hmm. Right. We're the person in charge of conjuring yeah. a moment or crafting and all of this. But we are a vessel under a wellspring that Ooh. never runs dry. Yeah. Mm. And whenever right. we feel that burnout, whenever we feel that stress, whenever we feel tired, we're away from the wellspring. Mm-hmm. Right. So we end up pouring out empty. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yep. We were also created to never be empty. But in <laughs> order to, to do that, we have to be under and yeah. allow the overflow right. yeah. to affect. There's so often, and I've been, I'm guilty of this, from I go up to the waterfall, fill the vessel up, mm-hmm. and then pour out, and then I'm tired again. Right. And then I go and I fill up, and I, it's... It's not a sustainable structure. No. We were meant to be under to that. Stay there. Yes. To stay there. Yeah. Yes. To stay. To stay. Yeah. I think about our senior pastor. Mm-hmm. I I remember sitting sitting and watching and I'm like, man, like, how does he always have something to say? The right thing to say. Mm-hmm. To whatever situation he's being asked. Like he's in a lot of different spaces, right? Like he loves leadership. He speaks to our staff. He speaks to attenders. And he always knows like what the right thing to say for each of those different audiences. And it Mm -hmm. just hit me in that moment. He's never left the wellspring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whatever is overflowing is Mm -hmm. right for the moment because it's coming from the sustainable source. Right. And it just hit me. And I like, I pray that I'm like, oh gosh, I don't ever want to leave. Right. Let it be mm-hmm. the overflow. Yeah. Let yeah. it be something. Because it's never right. from me anyway. Right. It's a complete lie to believe that we produce. We're right. a vessel. Yeah. It's so good. Like, And I love that image of like the wellspring. I think of like a teapot. Because uh-huh. it's got like the lid. Like the water goes in and it yes. pours out. Like you don't, if you're under that wellspring, there's no point at which you get to retain what's poured Ooh. in. You don't get to hold on to it. Yes. Mm-hmm. It all has to flow yes. out. Like yeah. it has to. Mm-hmm. Just be by the nature of physics and so if something is like if there is a theme that needs Mm -hmm. to be poured out more into your team or whatever like that's going to continue to be poured in and it's going to flow out but when it's time for something to shift for something to change that's going to change and you don't get to hold on yeah Yeah. but that's again goes back to the letting go and like this has historically been something that's been a struggle for me too and so 
um, something that I started doing years ago is like anytime I'm about to go on stage, whether I'm praying by myself or with my team, the prayer is just God empty me of me, Mm -hmm. empty us of us, fill us with you. Like, let us just be vessels, empty vessels of Mm. you, like pour into us what you want our people to hear and let it all be of you. And it is really like another, another good, um, metaphor for it is like a conduit of yep. energy like yep. you're just something that gets it just passes through mm-hmm. like yeah. your whole job is just to be empty and like pass yeah. pass the energy through like um but that that wellspring imagery is just so like yeah. you cannot you cannot hold on to something that is not yours to control mm-hmm. right like this is you are just yeah. you are just something it's supposed to pass right. through I, yeah. oh go ahead oh uh, well i'm just as as we're like we're talking about this like i literally i just see john four the woman at the well. Mm. And, and when Jesus meets this woman and, and asks her for a drink and, and invites her to, to take part in the water that mm-hmm. is everlasting satisfaction. And it's, it, it's so interesting because in that conversation, he tells her like who she is. Mm-hmm. He tells her, hey, I, I know about all of your husbands, yeah. and I know mm-hmm. about the man that you're with right now that isn't your mm-hmm. husband. Mm-hmm. I know yeah. about all of these things. And these are so often like the same <laughs> words, the same things that she had heard spoken in hate mm. against her Oof. for her whole yeah. adult life, potentially. Yeah. And now here she is, but she's hearing it from the Son of God. And what that leads her to is to repentance mm-hmm. and is to is to forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and again, like like now she is filled up and her response is I have to I have to go back to town. I gotta tell everyone about this. This yes. is this is the craziest thing. Yes. And that is when Jesus says, A time is coming that worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. Come on. Those are the byproducts of when we are filled up, when we are when we are that vessel that is that is that we are worshiping and worshipers in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. We can't do it with a false presentation. Mm-hmm. We can't do it with this. Hey, look, look at me. I've got it all together. No, 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 no. It's truth. It's honesty. It's mm-hmm. it's vulnerability. Yo, I am. I am just as messed up here, but our God sees that and mm-hmm. He still calls me son. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, on. like that's that's the. That's yeah. the story. Yeah. We got to be reminded that he does not pr- produce shame and guilt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He produces mm-hmm. freedom, freedom, mm-hmm. yeah. repentance. Mm-hmm. Like uh, that can get twisted sometimes mm-hmm. too, that as we evangelize and we bring, you know, even in, in our own life, when we, we think about just like that Isaiah moment, when we think about, oh my gosh, I'm a man of unclean lips. Like, look at all the things that I've done, that the shame and guilt does not come from mm-hmm. God at all. Mm-hmm. He just wants you close to him mm-hmm. to, to feel that freedom right. from that thing. Like right. he came yeah. to save you from that thing. Um, and that guilt and shame is just from the enemy. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to go back to just one thing as we're talking about the purity, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. uh, when you said like you were never meant to hold on to that thing. If God brings new stuff, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's supposed to, you're supposed to let it out. Like I, I've been guilty of letting a like season, letting a, a different season's fruit stay within the vessel mm. to taint what's coming new. Yeah. Right. Mm. Mm. Think of like if you want to have hot chocolate in a mug, but then the next day you want to have orange juice in that same mug. If you don't wash the mug, like if it's not cycled out, you're gonna yeah. get a little hot chocolate in that orange juice. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't taste good. It makes me like my teeth kind of hurt. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But how many times has that happened though? We we've held on to this thing that we Mm -hmm. think, you know, or we've seen God work Mm -hmm. in this other season, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it was so so good, and we just want to keep creating that thing. But God wants to bring something new. Mm -hmm. I think about COVID. Like Mm -hmm. there are completely new approaches that needed to happen. Right. In that season. And I think moving forward. Mm-hmm. But if we're holding on to the thing he did in 2019, right. to where people are in 2020, that it's tainted, right? It's yeah. the whole like new wineskin mm-hmm. metaphor that we see yeah. in scripture. It's like if we if we are vessels, there has to be purity. Right. There and has to be. That doesn't mean that there's not like benefit in what the hot chocolate brought. Sure. <laughs> but it's no. that that is not the thing that God is putting in front of us to lead in right now. Right. Like, yeah. Right. Well, that's a, a trigger warning, like to pay attention to when you when you notice the the fists start to clench uh-huh. to hang on to yeah. what was, and it keeps you from moving forward in the 
and the newness maybe that God is right. wanting to do or the refreshing that he's wanting to do or the cleaning that the he's cleaning. wanting to do, yeah. um, it's, it's based in fear because right. I'm afraid that if I let this go, it won't happen again. Mm. Or if mm-hmm. I let this go, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I, it'll be so different and it right. won't be as special. Or I won't know how to lead through it. Yeah, mm-hmm. or, yeah. or not knowing what yeah. lies ahead because yeah. what is familiar feels comfortable. Mm-hmm. And it does. It takes faith. Again, mm-hmm. that's like that thing again like where it, it can resurface. Mm-hmm. You think you like learn that lesson once and then you live a little bit more life or have a little bit more experience and you're like, well, crap, I thought I learned that lesson. <laughs> and I'm going to freaking relearn it again and yeah. release. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. so good. Yeah. That's so great. That's um, good. Game? Let's do a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's game time. It's game time. Game time. But we just want to do like fun stuff too. Yeah. Green and not just talk time. about like serious things. And Have you guys ever heard of the game Song Association? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Explain. Have you, have you ever played it before? I'm ass- like you kind of associate something like with a song. <laughs> is the is the game in the name? <laughs> <laughs> the name of the game. <laughs> it's always how, okay. how to play. Okay, so I'm going to guess at the rules here. You give okay. us a word, and then we associate. sing a song that has that word in it? Correct. Mm-hmm. That's exactly mm-hmm. it. Okay. We're going to give you 15 seconds to oh, do yeah. it. Can I'm somebody nervous. time? I'll do the timer. Sweat. Okay. I'm having like second. nervous sweats going on. I know. On. Me too. Okay. <clears throat> I 15 was seconds raised under a rock, so I don't know a whole lot. Of <laughs> I wasn't allowed songs. to listen to secular music, like ever growing up. Same. Uh, neither was I. Yeah. Until I got to until college, and I was like, until, yeah. I was like John listen, Mayer, dude. Until oh. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> How true is that? I remember I heard the John Mayer trio for the first time. I was like, "What is this?" So you didn't experience John Mayer until college? No, it was okay. like it was uh, it was probably like 2008, 2009. Okay, I okay. I learned how to illegally download music mm-hmm. in Torn. high school. Did yeah, you? that was yep, my LimeWire. LimeWire, guys, BMP3. rebellious wow. child oh, here. Dude. Wow, <laughs> I was like when I started driving, I would like going back to not being allowed to listen to certain things. It's like. I would, I'd have the Christian radio station on mm. like button one. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yes. And then you drive around, you listen to whatever you want to listen to. Uh-huh. You pull into the house because if right. mom and dad Scoop. get in the car the next day, <laughs> you want to make sure when the car mm-hmm. turns on, yep. it's mm-hmm. KSBJ, God listens. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dang. Ours so was, you put it on one before you get out of the car. That's so good. That's so good. Ours was uh, star 99.1. 99.1, man. <laughs> So Y'all in New Jersey, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So one word, uh, Gabe, why don't you go first? <clears throat> oh. 15 I would, seconds. I'd love to. I'm going to give you one word. Give us a song with the word in it. Okay. Okay. Ready? Oh, as soon as he says the word, I'll start the timer. Okay. <sighs> the word is love. Jesus Get. loves <laughs> Boo. Get it out. What's that? I got nailed it. Thank you, Steph. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a better song than Jesus Loves Me? He, he did it. It's the kinds of cop out song, <gasps> man. Oh, my gosh. It's, okay. it's I, great. It's great. You get the point. No, 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 no. It's cool. You get it's the cool, point, Rob. Gabe. I'll choose a devil song next. <laughs> That's better for you. <laughs> <laughs> Secular Satan. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll, it's just, uh, I'll it's do just better. The, I'll do better. I'll it's do better. like saying every answer is Jesus. What's two plus two? Jesus. Well, I mean, that was true. you. You were that kid. I for sure was. <laughs> you don't talk about it in church today. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, Steph, you ready? Ready. Oh, God. Here's your word. Tonight. Uh. <gasps> It's the pressure. My mind's blank. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I have 20 seconds. You have seven seconds. I don't know. I can't think of one. Give Tonight? Me. Tonight's the night. Let's live it up. Go ahead and smash it. Let's what, live it up. Get it? Hey! What, what, is it? what is it? What is yes. it? What is it? Uh, Tonight's the night. night. Let's live it up. Hey. <laughs> What's yeah. the name? We do not condone these choices of music. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a Chris Brown song. 
No, that's no. Not Black Eyed Peas. Is it Black Eyed Peas? Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, I, I was thinking of it. I literally well. can't think of the lyrics of the rest, so Monday, you put your Tuesday, hands up. Saturday, Friday. Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yes, yes. She got it. She got, she got it. it. Yeah. She got <gasps> it. Down, up, down, up, down. I think it's a different song. I was I was thinking that for <laughs> sure. I had so I've I got songs for like all these words. I was thinking Yeah, what were you thinking? Cause tonight will be the no. night that I will yeah. fall for you. Oh. That's solid. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. You got it. I you failed. got the point. I feel like I failed though. No. No, you didn't. You right. did no. it. You got there. Last second. Last second. Okay. Yeah. You wanna go next? Gabe, time her. Yeah. Time her. Let's go. I'm, okay. No. <laughs> I can't lean forward. <laughs> There's that a baby. It's not an option. She's a child. <laughs> 15 okay. seconds on the clock. Okay. Your word is mirror. It's like you're my mirror. Yeah. Oh. Uh. My mirror staring back at me. That one. Oh. 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 <laughs> Fire. No. Is there a Christian song that talks about mirror? Well, there no. is actually, I think. Is there? One of ours. The man <laughs> and the mirror. Um, oh, oh you, you, you did get it. Oh, you did. great. Oh, Good yeah, job. it's that perfection. Was a great one. Yeah. Perfection art. Oh, yeah. Something. Cause when I see you don't get to play because you picked Wait, wait can, we just, can we just pick a random word for you, though? <gasps> no, I don't play. I picked all these words. I know all well, the songs. Well, we can pick a word. Can we pick That's what I'm saying. I'm going to pick a word. The word is word. Okay, red fine. bud. <laughs> what did you Good s- luck. Did you say milk that? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? She said red, red bud. bud. Oh, red? It's a tree. Red there's bud? A, there's red a tree bud. In Oklahoma a tree. called a red bud. But I like milk that. Did you say milk that? Did you say milk that? Either one. Go, try. <laughs> hey, you got the first one. What's love got to do? That's I had true. I will always love you. On there, but oh. Oh, that's all right. Give me a word. We'll try it. Um, I'm really bad Jesus. At this. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus loves no, I'm gonna me. Go, I'm gonna go with um. Oh my God, Gabe. Morning. Morning. Dude, man, that's a. Do you have a song in mind for this? Um, in the morning, when I rise, mm-hmm. yeah, ah, yeah, nice. In the morning, got him. <laughs> in the rise, sing it, church. It. Mm-hmm. In the morning, hey. when Praise I him. rise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me Jesus. Well, see, you came up with a Jesus song too, bro. Well, mm. and you got a taste of your own medicine, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> we like Jesus songs. What was, here. What was, you like them. What was the song you were thinking of? Was it that one? It was that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. God. Yeah. I was like, that's a tough or one. Or I was thinking um, the other one was I'll Fly Away. And when I die, hallelujah, by and by. Oh, yeah. Ah. But they don't good. even think that's actually a part of the lyrics. It's just something that we sing. That was fun. <laughs> no, there's I got a couple more. Oh, there's more. <clears throat> I got a couple Must more. Resume my Gabe, you ready? Here. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Well if he gets a song I'm thinking of, there would be room for it. No pressure. <laughs> you ready? Okay, I'm ready. The word is believe. I'm praying for you right now. Do you believe in love after love? After love Is that where you were going? Love, no, but that's great. Okay, well, that's all I got. Something. Something no, I was thinking when you believe from the Prince of Egypt. Oh. Be oh. I feel like I need to rewatch this. Y'all are like sold out on that movie I've seen oh, many times. Well, it's so Have you good. recently looked at the cast? It this is movie? like it Does is this look the, like the most face of someone who's seen the cast, cast so of all stars. I can't. I, yeah. can't I, I was when I was like two years ago. Two years ago, mm-hmm. I was like, "Wait, who's in that?" Correct. Oh, they're in that too. Everyone. Oh, and they're in yeah. that too. And they're in that too. All right. And yeah. Everyone's I in them. And down. then they get Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey oh, to duet the what? song. Yeah. 
For a movie about Moses. I the know. two best singers of the age. Where have yeah. I been? On the same yeah. track. We went okay. so hard. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. It's amazing. It's like, what was the budget for this film? I don't know. And Hans Zimmer did the music? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, it wow. was like, it was A-list all the way. Incredible. Okay. Well, yeah. give homework. That Maybe. ship passed. It sailed by and I didn't jump on. So. Well, you can still it's jump on it's because the movie there. is timeless. <laughs> Swim into it. Your kids need to watch it. Okay. They need oh, to know. Yes. It's they great. really do. It's so good. It's wild. Okay, one last. One last one. Steph, are you ready? Ready or not. The word is adventure. What? <laughs> Don't show her the time. She's going to get stressed. Adventure? Adventure. This is a great yes! adventure. Yes! Yes! That was the like, one. That was the only song that has that word in it. <laughs> Saddle up your horses. We got a trail and blaze. Walk throughout the yonder. That's it. God, that's it. Every 90s kid knows that yes. song. Well, hold on. Every 90s church kid. Correct. That is true. <sighs> Sorry, Stuart. <laughs> I hit the mic. Stick Every '90s engineer. church kid, for sure, knows oh, yeah. that song. The the i the icon that mm-hmm. is Stephen Curtis Chapman wow. to start off a chorus with "Saddle up your horses." The verse. That's like the first. Aren't those like the first no. words of the song? That's the chorus. It is, oh, okay. but it's a, it's like one of those that opens with the chorus. Y'all, I, gotcha. So I went to school. I went to college in Nashville, and you know, when you go, if you're a church kid, mm-hmm. when you go to school, you're like checking out churches you're gonna attend. Sure, yeah. And I remember going to one church one weekend, and it was the church he went to. And I don't really get like starstruck. Sure. But I was Stephen, Stephen Curtis Chapman, starstruck. Yeah. I like made sure I walked like when we were dismissed. I was like walking behind. I never said anything. I just like <laughs> followed him out. Amazing. Oh my I don't god! Think I don't even know what to say <laughs> if I saw him in person. Now. I was like, hi. hi, icon, icon. Steven, yes. what did he smell like? <laughs> what, what kind of question is that? I don't know. She's, I don't know. she's been walking in his way. You know, she's yeah. just following, <laughs> touching the hem of his garment. I was literally. That's what I felt like. I'm in like. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Steven, oh my gosh. if you ever see this, come and join the green room. Please. Oh, we would please. love it. Please. Oh my really gosh. awkward and starstruck, but it'll be fun. Oh my gosh, it'd <laughs> be if incredible. If you ever are in the mood, just saddle up that horse. Saddle up <laughs> the horse yeah. and get on over here. Come on out to Oklahoma. We've got some trails to blaze out here. We got, there are some trails to blaze. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Say it. Say what, it. Well, it's, it's one of Elise's. My wife, she messes up common turns of phrase all the time. <laughs> so, true. so one time she <laughs> was trying to refer to someone as being um, a trailblazer, and she <laughs> called them a path paver. <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, they're 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 a path paver. Yeah, I was like, mm. they're such a path paver. I'm from now on. From now on. Gosh. I want to be a path paver. Yeah. Oh, man. A path paver is unite. Craig, <laughs> paving, paving paths through the Pastor house. Craig Rochelle, such a path paver. Oh. <laughs> wow. Just doing new things for the Lord. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. We got a path to pave. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, we, need Elise. we need Elise. We need Elise on. Crying. Please. Uh, everyone needs Elise. Yeah. yeah. It's true. I love if she <sighs> joined us. That would be really fun. Because <laughs> <laughs> maybe one will happen live, you know? And then we would get to. Oh. <laughs> we wouldn't recover. Oh, that would be so great. We have like a whole note. Filled. There's approximately <laughs> 75 on there. Uh, <laughs> Anytime there's an update to the Elise isms note, yes. you know it's going to be a good day. Oh. Oh, yeah. Amen. Uh, is, there, well, is there anything else you wanted to to hit on this one? What's our so. time? I think uh, I think we've about wrapped it up for this one. It's been a great conversation, great. Yeah, guys. Yeah, it's good stuff. Thanks for hanging with us here in the green room. Um, there'll be more of these conversations to come, so follow along. You can follow us on social media at LC Worship, and um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Gabe, do you want to pray us out? Yeah, yeah I'd love to. Good. God, we just thank you for this time. Um, that we get to just talk about your goodness. We get to slow down from the pace of our life and we just get to recognize who you are and mm-hmm. who we are in you. Mm-hmm. Um, God, I thank you for these friends that we get to um, that we get to just sharpen each other, that we get to encourage one another. God, I pray for every person who 
uh, who may hear this conversation, God, that, that you would use it um, in some way, God, that you would speak to them, that you would, um, that you would just remind them uh, of who you are mm-hmm. and who yes. they are um, and the, the leaders and the pastors um, that you have called them to be, mm-hmm. um, just to love the people that are around them. And, and ultimately, God, we just ask for your strength as we just try to submit our life to you. Yeah. Um, would you fill us up? Would you empower us? We need you so desperately, God. Mm-hmm. We love you, and it's in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's go pave some paths. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>